order. And um, I'll, I'd like to introduce um, our speaker, if I can find my, my little bits of notes, here we are. Hello. So I've taken the liberty of sharing a picture which um, attracted me to the idea of um, asking Jane to do one of these webinars. And the story is that um, at the, on the 12th of August last year, um, Di, who's on this call with us, um, did a session, a webinar on um, the work, well, it included work that she'd done while she was in the US on a, um, was it on a, oh, what, what was it on? The, what fellowship? It was on a was Fulbright. It? Fulbright, that's right. I, I, yes, I should have remembered because it was the same fellowship as um, my son got when he went over. Um, and one of the things that you did was to, um, I think, get uh, students or work with students working with models to understand the water cycle in their local environment. Does that sum it up? Yeah, that's right. We were looking at patterns of water and patterns of land. And, I, and, and then um, what happened was that Jane, um, I found on the web uh, this um, post of Jane's, which um, showed some of the students that she worked with in, in Carmo um, working to create a 3D model of their um, local rohe, um, including the Awa and the Maunga. And I thought, hey, this is this will be quite a good uh, follow-up session to Diane's one. Um, and so Jane, who's now working at um, as an Enviro School facilitator with Northland Regional Council, agreed to do it. And we hope we ha had hoped to do it at the end of last year, but we got our timing wrong because at the end of November, which is when we had um, decided that we would do it, everybody was frantically flapping around the end of the school year. And there were there was a total of three people, Jane, me and Jen. So we decided to postpone it and this is the result. So we're doing it today. So um, Without further ado, I'd like to introduce um, Jane. And um, yeah, I look forward very much to what you have to share. Now, just before we get started, um, a couple of things. It probably is best, and you, you all seem to be pretty disciplined at this, but probably best if, if you're not actually talking to turn off your uh, microphone. Um, and you can use, of course, you know, you all know about the chat. Um, you can use the chat to send messages to the speaker or to each other, um, you know, if you've got comments on what's going on and so on. And we'll have, um, Jane will give her, her presentation and then we'll have a brief time for um, questions, comments, discussions, and so on. Does that sound all right? Okay, cool. Right. So it's over to you, Jane, without all further right. ado. Thank you. Um, Welcome. Kia ora, thank you. I'm, I'm just excusing myself. This is my first webinar. I know I've got too many slides. Pull faces at me when you start getting bored or, you know, do something. So <laughs> I, I know to shut up. Okay, I'm going to share my screen now. I hope that's what's going to happen anyway. All right, um, play. All right, everybody see that okay? Okay, I'm going to start with my whakatauki. He ata mea nui o te ao, mākoe ki atu. He tamariki, he tamariki, he tamariki. So what is the most important thing in the world? For me, I think it is, uh, it's children, it's children, it's children. Hence, I'm a teacher. And uh, Dame Finna Cooper agrees with me. Take care of your children. Take care of what they hear. Take care of what they see. Take care of what they feel for how the children grow. So will be the shape of Aotearoa. Tēnā uh, koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa, ko Dominion Monarch Titima. Uh, my family came over here on the Dominion Monarch in 1950. Ko Piroa Te Maunga, ko Ahuroa Te Awa. The Maunga behind our farm is Piroa and the Awa is Ahuroa. Nō Waipua Hau, which is just down the road from where I live now at Ruakaka. Uh, ko Ngāti Pākehā Te Iwi, ko Austin Tokuingoa Whānau, ko Jane Norman Tokuingoa. 
ko Kayarahi o Kurak Payal no te tai tukiroa hau. So I'm in Northland and I'm now an Envira Schools facilitator as of uh, the beginning of last year. Um, as Michael said to you, he saw this photo online and asked me whether I would talk about it. So in my last two years of teaching, um, I was asked to set up a Te Reo Māori uh, whānau class, uh, which freaked me out totally. Being Pākehā, I um, chickened out a bit, and um, so I job shared with a, a Māori friend of mine, and uh, so we did it together. <laughs> Very much an experiment. Um, but it was a great fun, and I enjoyed it thoroughly. Um, beginning of every year in Taitukiro, and in fact in Aotearoa, we go to Waitangi, it's just up the road from us, it's not far, so we gathered all our parents from our whānau class and our community and went to Waitangi and um, thought about what we were going to do next. So, uh, okay, we've got this class, um, what's our local curriculum going to be, what are we going to talk about, what are we going to teach about, what do you want to know? Uh, ka mua, ka muri, in everything in the Māori world, it's looking back in order to move forward. So we were looking at back at where our tupuna had come from and what they did and the knowledge and the matauranga that they um, had, had, had uh, done before and which we were standing on. So that was our beginning place. From that, we decided, okay, so we know um, our school and this is our school values. So um, pride, proactive, respect, independence, determination and excellence. So we thought, okay, well, that's where we want to base it. We'll start with those. And we are, we're also an Enviro school. So we um, had a look at the Enviro school whole school approach and that fitted in with our Ngā Motupono, uh, with our, um, our values, empowering students, um, looking through a Māori lens, Māori perspectives, uh, building sustainable schools and sustainable communities, respect for diversity of people and cultures, leaving no one behind is what I say, and learning for sustainability and making that um, in every aspect of our school life. So people, programs, practices in place. So we looked back to the Enviro schools for quite a few things. Um, then we looked at the action learning cycle, uh, which is in four quarters, identifying the current situation. So looking where have we come from, where are we now? Um, exploring where we wanted to go, what alternatives there were, uh, what action we might take and reflecting on change. Um, and we came up with our key words that um, with our whānau community. So we wanted to start with our pepiha, um, who are the tangata that we belong to, what's the wahi, what is the place we belong, our maunga, our awa and our rohi. So these um, questions here are of that learning cycle. Where have we come from and what do we want to know now? And how did we get to be this way? So we thought, and Fano uh, said to us, well, you need the kaumātua, which we, we did, <laughs> to find out where we've come from, our oral and written history, and the whakiwaitara and the waiata. And then, so where are we now? What different cultural perspectives are there? And what can we observe? And around us, we have forest, we have um, wetlands, we have farmland, European farming methods. Um, a lot of the wetland is gone. The forest has been cleared. So that was our beginning place. Uh, this is Matua Dick. He, he is our, um, our kura komatua. And behind him, or oh, on that maunga, is um, Parakiori, which we can see out the window of the school. Um, so we went for a trip up to the top of the maunga with um, Matua Dick. And he's standing up there pointing out the marae, which is down the bottom of it, and his home. And behind him, you can see um, a lot of flat uh, dairying land that was part of the Hikarangi Swamp. Um, and so there's about a huge area of now drained swamp, swamp land um, in there. All the wetland is gone. And he's talking to us about when he was a child, when visitors came to the house, the mum would say to him, you kids get down to the swamp and, and go and get some kai. And he said they'd go down with a sack and they'd be back in 10 minutes with a sack full of tuna. Um, and now he said, you know, it takes you a week to find two. So that's the difference between the old days and now. And this is a, um, a, a 
map of where we are. I don't know what you can pick out. You can see where the school is. And then behind that is Hurupaki. Um, and that was a, there was a par at the top of that. Um, and then behind that, there's a, a three more maunga, Ngarai Tanua, Te Rāwhiti Roa, and Kaihau. Kaihau's got a little lake on the top of it um, where the babies were um, washed and, and things. And yeah, and Parakiori is the great big one at the back where we were standing looking back down on the others. Um, in the left-hand corner, bottom corner, you can see Pukanui, which is 2,500 hectares of um, native forest that we went up into quite often too. Up in the corner, ko Hurupaki te maunga, ko Utapapa te awa, ko Kamo Kura te marae, that's our school, uh, Pepiha. Um, so then I looked at the science um, curriculum and pulled out the nature of science, as our understanding about science, investigating in science, communicating in science, participating, contributing. And these were the um, objectives that we pulled out. So I, I do need to explain that this was um, a local curriculum. So it was an ongoing thing. It wasn't just a one-off unit. I mean, actually, we did it for about two years. <laughs> so I'm just sort of covering it broadly here. Um, yeah. So I'll let you have a little read for a moment. Okay, um, so moving on from that, so then we have, we're trying to think what can we learn, what actions could we take? And so we looked at the thing, the obvious things, the maunga, the volcanoes, um, we're in, on a volcanic plateau in fact, so there's a lot of maunga in our area and behind us and all around us, a bit like Auckland. Um, and the Ngahiri, so talking about Pukanui Forest up the road from us and where we'd planted trees and things. And the kids, um, these are some of the things that they wanted to pick out to learn about. So the birds and the animals, the predator control, Cody dieback, which is very pertinent to us. Um, we have a shade house where we raise, raise um, seedlings. The whale and the Cody is a, um, a, a legend that some people are using or trying to use to um, cure the kauri. Um, the wetlands, the awa. Yeah. Um, so out of that, the kids kind of divided themselves into groups according to their interests. Oh, one thing I forgot to say, when we were on top of Parakiori, one of the things that Matua Dick said to us is, um, why don't you make a scale model of the rohi? And so some of the kids picked up on that and they wanted to um, have a go at doing that, so they did, and others wanted to be propagators in the shade house. Um, one group formed a, a trapping group and worked with one of the other teachers um, setting traps. Um, one group went out as water monitors with a local white bait connection group, and others um, did a unit on Cody dieback, investigated that. Uh, what else? Do, and then we thought, who else do we need to get involved? What designs will work best? So these are some of the people. Should I read all that? Okay. Um, find out what the conservationists were doing. So these are some of the local people that we thought about who could help us. Uh, the forest rangers, the land care groups. Um, one of our um, local ladies is a, a plant guru who does a lot with rare plants, so we had to go growing some rare plants. Um, very successfully with the hibiscus Richard Sinai, which is that little flower you can see. Very unsuccessfully with the um, kakabeek. Unfortunately, they all died. Um, so then we planted riparian plants too that, that we could use to um, on a local waterway. Um, and then we had to do a lot of work on maps for the group that wanted to do the scale modeling. We were in contact with the council and trapping with Mr. Brown. And that's just a, a quick snap of some of the things the kids were doing, the water monitoring. Um, they're in Pukanui Forest. They're doing some riparian um, planting and they did quite a bit of trapping. And so that's just some of the things that the AWA group um, got up to measuring and monitoring the water with the white bait connection group, um, studying the landforms, 
looking at different um, plant species and insects that they found around the stream and um, kiawai that they found in the stream. I'm sorry I haven't got any more, more photos or anything, but it was a little while ago and I couldn't find that many. Um, yeah, okay. Um, this was um, what we did with the mapping. We actually did this together as a class mostly. Um, so we had to do a whole lot of work on the mapping, which is might be what you're interested in. Um, so we looked at paper map, maps. They had to learn um, how to read a map, what all the symbols meant um, about measuring and um, scaling things, scales. Yeah, so we spent a lot of time on that, but this was their favorite bit. They loved getting onto Google Maps. We probably spent quite a few weeks doing Google Maps when they were uh, finding the tree next to their house and where they used to live when they were little and the other school they went to and Nana's house and they just loved it. They had a ball doing that. So that's the, yeah, that's our area again. You can see our maunga and forest. Yes, and um, yeah, that was a part of our scaling. Um, all the books have gone, so I couldn't take any more photos. <laughs> That took us a while too. It was a lot of experimentation. We scaled um, the school and we scaled the classroom and we scaled all sorts of things. And then we had to try and um, draw the maunga from the maps. And on. so that was them trying to do that and then painting it. And yeah, that, that was lots of fun too, but it took a long time. Everybody had a go. And there they are, the successful model. And uh, the key that they, the boys worked out Scale model of the Rohi of Kamo, Te Kurutu Tahi of Kamo. Yeah. And Manaki Whenua, Manaki Tangata, Haere Whakamua. Take care of the land, take care of the people, move forward. Yeah. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. That was brilliant. That was, I really enjoyed that. Um, let's throw this open for questions. I uh, see that. Um, Diane put up a wee question while, while you're in full flow, Jane. Um, did you want to repeat the question? Uh, I was just looking at one of your photos of the uh, water quality testing, Jane, and wondering what kind of fish you had up there. Oh, what kind of fish? Yeah, there was, uh, there was those were mostly inanga, I think. Okay. From what I can remember. You know, yeah, we did find some um, kiwi, some coat, um, mayfly, caddis, um, uh, what do you call them, nymphs. Um, I'm just trying to remember back now. Um, um, we did it more than once. Uh, it, there was times when we found a little bully, I'm trying to remember what sort of bully it was, common bully, I think. Um, uh, corkapoo, we found corkapoo. Yeah. Uh, so... Would that have been in the forest area or would that have been, because that wouldn't have been in the dairying area, would it? No, that was in the park beside the school, actually. So across the road from us, the creek runs along the side of the um, local wreck and, and it runs through a patch of bush. So it was actually in that patch of bush. Yeah. yeah so we, we um, monitored in two places, one inside the bush and then one beside the path in an uh, open more open area which wasn't shaded uh, but astonishingly we found kihawai in there as well which i was quite surprised about because i didn't think we would but they were still there yeah, yeah that, that's so that thing. runs through it runs through uh, the most northern suburb but uh, probably more like one acre blocks um yeah starts with a spring probably uh two kilometers away from us Oh, yeah. Jane, can I ask you um, if you would stop um, screen sharing so that oh, we, can, we can see everybody? Okay. And yeah. um, I noticed you've got four uh, comments in the chat. Okay. So if, if, if you could stop that screen sharing altogether by clicking share okay. screen at the bottom. Um, I've just got to figure out how. <laughs> I, I thought it, I had that figured out, but it's, oh, there. Yeah. Okay. Yep, got it. Okay. Yeah, cool. Okay, good. Right, some down chat. And, and so somewhere and on the chat, there's uh, several folk. Has, uh, who was that? Natalie is monitoring of the... 
Awa, I guess that means. Awa, I think it is, yes. <laughs> it's just a little mistake, aren't um, <laughs> Sorry. That's <laughs> all right. I, I honestly can't tell you, Natalie, because I haven't been back. Um, hmm. Well, I actually have been back, but I haven't answered, asked that question, but I also haven't heard anybody talking about it. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we, we were, while I was there, we were doing it quite frequently, um, probably twice a year. I don't know how frequently that is, but, but probably twice a year. But um, I haven't heard that anybody's continued it since. But they may have. I just haven't asked. Yeah. So Jane, what, what do you think was the um, result of having the kids put all that learning time into developing their model? Do you think it positively impacted their learning? Definitely. Definitely. Um, I think the trips out of the classroom, the fact that we climbed those maunga, um, you know, they connected to that and then they wanted to know, like one of the boys got right into the whole volcano thing and he had about a million questions to ask and things to find out that he really wanted to know about. So they did all go off on their own inquiries. Um, and sometimes we come back in together like we did for the mapping. Um, and we did when we were planting in the forests. And so, yeah, they learned a lot about um, monitoring the quality of the water. Um, we did that together as well. Not every time, but um, a, a few times we did that with the whole class. Yeah, uh, my, yeah, I think they would have learned quite a bit about that. My, my experience is with the modelling that it does. It's a way of bringing all the learning back yeah. in together to share yeah. it with the whole group. Yeah. Yep, they loved it. I mean, at, at the beginning, you can see those two boys explaining it to one of the other teachers. And I mean, they were just passionate about it. No, you know, they just loved it. Yeah. 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 And they had a lot more vocabulary at the end. <laughs> yeah. I think they did. Mm. Any more questions? Yeah, pai pai. Jane, I noticed that your um, two things. One, um, is with your tra trapping group, the photo of the, the, the traps. I wonder yes. where the egg came from. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to think. I think that was one trip that we did into the forest and that was actually um, not the one that we used at school. We did have one at school. We have a little native reserve around the back of our, 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 our school property and the boys were trapping in there, but they were using salted rabbit in there. That was when we'd actually gone into Pukanui Forest with the rangers. And I think that was one of the rangers traps, that one. And they, so, they, they catch so they were using yeah, eggs they, they try to catch stoats with those eggs. Right, right. Because I mean, that's a sort of silly. We've got um, uh, three silky bantams at home, and it's a sort of stupid place that they would lay their eggs. You know. <laughs> no, it wasn't quite like that. No, they actually <laughs> use them for trapping to catch stoats and rats. And the other thing I was wondering was, with, with you with with your map, with your with your uh, model. Yeah. I can see that you've uh, mapped it out in terms of um, the linear dimensions. And yes. You sort of scaled it. Yes. What about vertically? Yes, yes, we tried to do that too. Oh, cool. We tried to do that as well. That was it. Was it took us quite a while. <laughs> we needed a, a bit of help with our maths on that one, but um, we we did manage. To, we tried very hard to get that correct. Because it's a, it's quite a, a challenge to visualize the shape of the land from looking at a, a, a flat map. And I so the kids all had to learn about contour lines as well. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Um, well, they, they learned to read, con to, to know what contour lines are anyway. But then Google Earth was very helpful um, because we could do the um, perspective. Yes, yes. With, with that one. Um, and I think so, Parakiori was the tallest of those, which was something like 300 and something meters. And I think we had something like um two and a half centimeters to a hundred meters or something mm -hmm, like that mm -hmm. oh well done that must have been a big challenge <laughs> it was a bit of a challenge good learning opportunity hey <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah but i don't think i'm not you know i wouldn't say that our scale model was absolutely accurate we we planned it accurately uh but by the time we'd finished it I, it wasn't necessarily accurate <laughs> good good effort though <laughs> 
Hey, anybody, a, a, any questions or, or observations or thoughts from anybody else? And anybody got any ideas how they could use what um, Jane has spoken about with your own kids? I was just wondering, um, like I see lots of really cool stuff like this. Do you reckon it's it would be reusable year after year for the new kids coming in as well? The whole idea or the particular scale model? Uh, well, so yeah, I suppose that's the kind of thing. Like, um, it would be cool to have that scale model on display somewhere. But if if each new class is coming in, is going to make another one. It's sort of you get a pile up of scale models, or yeah, but, um, no, you probably wouldn't do that. I, I I wouldn't think anyway. Um, that those particular kids got to speak about it, you know, to the rest of the school. Um, they they also um talked to the Komato again about it. Um. Yeah, I, I suppose you could use it as a beginning um, one and then you're going to go off on the tangents that the kids want to go. So next time it might be, you know, a whole lot more about the Cody Forest or I don't know. Or the geology or... Um, yeah, or the geology. I mean, because yeah. we did learn a bit about the geology, you know, where the Cody's and, and the Kahitias grow, grow in different places and on different soil structures and... Um, Part of Pukanui Forest is a broadleaf forest, and some is a uh, more of a conifer type, you know, the um, Rimu and the Kodi. So we, uh, we learned a little bit about that. I mean, some of the kids would have retained that, some didn't. I can so see. That does that mean sort of Sorry. each year you're creating a sort of creating a lot more new resources again, or are you still sort of finding there's a bit that you can reuse, or is it like the kids are generating a lot of that stuff? Themselves? The kids are generating a lot of it. So if we get, we're giving them the opportunity by taking them on those trips, taking them, you know, up Parikiori and up Parihaka and up the Maunga um, and to the Awa. And each time, you, you know, different groups of kids are going to get into different things. Um, we, we looked at the invertebrates, but we didn't spend much time doing that, really. I mean, another group might. Yeah. Um. We just were going to make Rungawa, well, but we didn't because we never got around to it in the end. Sorry, we Can might I... with another group. No, Sorry, no, I, I was just going to um, ask, Ruff, how many kids did you have in this class? Okay, I, I only had 18. So it did cool. make it easier, cool. Jono. Yeah. Yeah. And they, they were a, like a vertical, like a mixed mixed year levels? Mixed. They were, they were just two, year five and six. Okay, yeah. Um, I really liked your wahi pepeha, pepeha wahi, um, and the way you, you linked that in, because we have a pretty strong pepeha for our school as well. But I can see I can tweak what you've done there and use that in our kura too. Yes. Um, so thank you for that. That's, that's fantastic sharing. Um, but also just on that repetition of, of trips outside, that's one of the most powerful things I think we can do with our kids. Yeah. Um, each time they go, they either make a deeper connection or there's some new learning for them. Yeah. And I really truly believe that that it helps embed not only a love of the environment, but a love of learning in the kids. Mm. That was one of the things that we that, that was stipulated right at the beginning when we began the Fano class, that we would get them out of the classroom as frequently as we could and because we only had a group of 18 it was easier than uh you know it would be if you're trying to take a whole syndicate or something did you yeah. find oh sorry oh, sorry i don't think syndicate would work but whole class works hmm. um very definitely and it it's a really strong um to our maori perspective as well that you're kind of then building in it's a good way to justify it guys yeah yeah I mean, I would do that. I would always do that. Is to start with the manga and the awa, and the, yeah. Anyway. So I've got a question um, to uh, Jane and Diane. Um, as a teacher who <coughs> takes the kids outside, uh, trying to inspire my other colleagues um, to use the outdoor classroom sort of space. Um, have you guys had any sort of success with other teachers? Um, sort of getting on board with getting the kids outside or do you have any tips or <laughs> mm. yeah that's a good question that one 
Um, or just keep modeling, modeling, modeling. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's not an easy thing to do. And I think, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to stay positive, but I think it's actually got a whole lot harder. Um, yeah, I just think it's good. You, you need your principal's um, support. <laughs> yeah. How has it, how's it got a whole lot harder? Is that is that a safety thing or a curriculum thing or a school attitude thing or what? Um, well, I know from like my school is different to a lot of places, but our class sizes can be sort of 50 to some of the highest ones have been 70 kids. So the number of staff you need to go out yeah. with the kids in order to have your proper amount of supervision is pretty hard. Mm. Um, I've, like I've tried to get parents on board before and we have had a few parent helpers come but also just with class sizes that big like you have to get a really specialized bus <laughs> like transporting that number of kids is really hard um, so like we do do some school field trips and stuff like that but it's it's not super easy and unfortunately where we are in Rolleston it's just it's really flat <laughs> so it's we can we can walk across the road to the local playground for like playground physics but other than that, there's not really any cool things within walking distance of the thing. So, mm. yeah, that's where we've kind of struggled. Mm. It's why we need local passenger rail in Christchurch. <laughs> yeah. um, I think, it, yeah, it, it is really tough if you don't have something local. So um, I teach in a class with, we've got 54 kids at the moment. And we try and organise things so that there are, either multiple jobs that we can do. So we're really lucky. Um, there's an area of our local stream, 10 minute walk from school. It was just a bare paddock five years ago. And now it's starting to look lush and lovely with all the planting that we are continuing to do there. And so we have the council who come along and we've just got them get, bringing a continuous bark mulch supply. So there's always an enormous pile there and we take old paint buckets up. So we'll have some kids that are planting, but the mulching is really good for those kids that yeah. like to move. And like a lot of our, um, I suppose, tricky kids yeah. who benefit from what I would call some heavy work, mm. lifting and digging and shoveling and stuff. They love it. It's they fantastic. Do. They love it. And then we start looking underneath all that mulch and we find all the all the fungi starting to grow in there, all the micellar, and there's usually earwigs and worms and stuff like that in there. So that, that's a kind of simple thing. But going back to your question no, about involving other off. teachers, um, we've done a lot of tuakana work. So I've got a year four, five, six class, and um, we'll very frequently buddy up with a year one, two or three class and take them up with us. And once we get them up there, the kids love it. And the teachers kind of go, oh, oh, actually this is quite easy. And so they either keep coming with us as a buddy class or, and here we're very lucky because we've got one community member who is very happy to support us. And so I give her phone number to them and they ring up and they go, hey Pam, can we come up on Friday? And even if it's only for an hour, but that's the benefit of having something that is really local. As yeah. far as those trips out, like if you're in Rolleston, um, it's tricky. It's so hard because, yeah, you've got to get this massive bus to take you. Um, yeah, I was just wondering about that because I think we probably do actually have, like, not rivers, but we probably have local streams. So did you start by, like, talking to the local council about getting involved in that sort of planting? Or how did, how did you find that little spot that you could you could work on? Uh, that, that was what we did initially. We, we worked, um, we contacted the council, but we, we worked on the stream that was right across the road from the school so that we could walk there. That wasn't an issue with that one. Yeah, and for us, we did the same thing. We um, we worked with Enviro schools, and um, I don't know if you've got mountains to see down in Christchurch, but we had them on board as well. And so we organised um, discussions with the community officer and the Hutt River Ranger that we'd never heard of, but there is one. And 
they gave us an area down at the bottom of the valley, which we started to plant, and that was a massive fail. The planting was fine, we got it underway, but it was an hour to walk down there and an hour to walk back. And by the time you'd done all the work down there, and so the weeds got away, um, some of those plants have survived. But then we also had a, had a drama with the biodiversity section of Greater Wellington Regional Council and the flood protection people don't talk. So we'd been given permission by biodiversity, flood protection came in and said, but you've planted harakiki here. No, that's going to catch all the flood debris and it's going to rip the banks out and no, that has to go. Um, so we went upstream where it's much, much easier for us and much more successful. And at the moment, we're doing a little bit of guerrilla planting, I suppose, where we haven't got permission, but you know, things self-seed, don't they? <laughs> we, um, we actually had the council mow over ours one year. <laughs> Even so though we had permission from them, they... Forgot to tell their mowing guys. Yeah, no, we did too, but things come back. <laughs> Jamie, if you, um, there's a guy at um, Environment Canterbury who is, uh, he's involved with working with local farmers with regard to water resources. And he is a guy called Mananui Ramsden. He's in the, a member of uh, Naitahu Iwi. And he might be able to put you in touch with um, people in the local iwi. He spoke to us um, some time ago about um, the way that the local um, guys walked from um, Port Levy on the peninsula right across to the west coast to get um, uh, to get Ponamu and back again. And um, so there's, he, he could be a useful resource. Uh, and there's also, I think Lincoln, one of the schools in Lincoln has done a lot of work around um, uh, Te Wahara, Lake Ellesmere. Um, and so, you know, there are one or two uh, people around in our area that are actually doing stuff. Another person, Jamie, is um, at ECAN is Matt Stanford, who's the Youth Engagement Officer. Oh, cool. Uh, and he used to be an uh, Enviro Schools leader. Um, and I've been out with him a few times with St. Margaret's and a few other schools um, who have been gifted parts of different rivers and streams to look after. So he might know. Cool. Well, there, because I think Rolleston's in a different district, isn't it? Selwyn district rather than Canterbury? No, Selwyn's part of Canterbury. It's, Selwyn's um, part of Canterbury. Cool. In, in, I'm not very. Environment Canterbury covers the whole of Canterbury, right from um, right up the north, you know, Cheviot area, right the way down to um, Waitaki River. Waitaki River. Um, would you mind putting the name of the first guy you mentioned in the chat? I just don't think I'd be able to spell his name on my notes. <laughs> All right, I'll do that. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, guys. Yeah, I. I really want to work on that um, participating and contributing part of NOS because I don't think we have, we I don't think we have that going for us very well at our school. So. Jamie, another thing, another thing maybe you could try doing that we did uh, last year. I think was um, just we just put it out there in the newsletter, both our school newsletter and our community newsletter and Facebook page, um, and we got a couple of local landowners that we didn't know about. Um, one who actually was adjacent to the stream that we already work on beside our school. So that was really cool. So just even just putting out simply like that, just to, um, yeah, you know, that was still within walking distance, which was great. Yeah, um, I think um, Jacinda also knows Nick from Mountains to Sea that, uh, in the Christchurch area. But um, yeah, I can also ask my Mountains to Sea host and see uh, if there's anything going on down there, especially with a white bait connection, um, I might be able to get you a contact. And you guys in Canterbury have kind of an amazing problem there with the nitrates in the water. I mean, that well, would be an amazing project to do, especially I, in secondary schools. I was just thinking about, you know, the different things that you could map and one of them could be nitrate and, and other uh, crap in the water. <laughs> And I, look, Jane, the other, the other thing that, that really that really struck me, that really hit me when you showed it, was that slide, I think it was about third from the beginning, which was like a um, systems map of your whole area. The one with the, the one that was circular, 
and had all the um, interconnecting yeah. arrows and things. And I yeah. think that that was a really powerful picture. You know, it really hit me between the eyes. I don't know whether people found it like that, but a sort of thinking system. So, yeah. Is that the one that's out of the Envira School cut? I thought it was the one. It might have been, but it, I thought it was one. It was one relating to your school, but it was the round one with the arrows yeah, around. Yeah, round it. one. It's actually, it's actually um, the whole school approach out of the Envira School. Oh, okay. Um, oh, the yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, I think that would be quite powerful to make one specific to each school. So, yeah, it would. I was also thinking, Jane, that um, in Whangarei, that area in the Hikurangi Swamp, I, my parents live there and I grew up just on the other side of the mountain <laughs> of okay. um, Parikiori. And yeah. one, maybe if it was an interest of the kids in an area like that, soil sampling could be quite cool. Yeah. Would be kind of moving your way down the hillside into the flats or yeah. something that would be a neat thing to do. It would be a neat thing to do, mm. especially if you correlate it with what's growing there. Mm. Yeah, Kilda Jane, Chris, um, also asks w with this sort of structure, like how long, w what was the time period that the, the kids were doing that particular project over? Was it like the entire year? It was in like, yeah, just like rough time scale. Yeah, no, it was actually two years, Jono. <laughs> so it was, um, yeah, it was ongoing the whole time, interspersed with other things, obviously. But yeah, it was a yeah, okay. So it wasn't, it wasn't a quick thing. And roughly, like during during sort of each week, how much sort of time would you devote to it? Well, I guess I teach in secondary. Yeah. School, so, so we, 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 we probably little... spent an afternoon. Maybe, I mean, it depends on the week. If the, we were yeah. interrupted by heaps of other things and sports things and um, testing and all that sort of stuff, then we might use two yeah. afternoons a week. Um, okay. But yeah, some weeks we didn't get to it at all. And then other weeks we'd managed to, so yeah. Okay. So, I mean, there was a lot of gardening and things like that involved as well in there with the, um, with the shade house and yeah, prepping the things. Nice to see you guys. I've got to head off. Um, thanks, Jane. That was a great webinar. Thanks, Diane. Cheers, Diane. Um, that uh, reminds me that um, talking about the interaction of the whole environment, there's, um, there are a couple of guys down in oh, one of the intermediate schools in um, Dunedin who were on the uh, Primary Science Teacher Fellowship, which came before this program. And they've been doing, they were doing a, a, a substantial project on one of the lagoons just south of Dunedin. Um, and they were looking at the whole um, ecosystem from that sort of point of view. Um, and that, that was quite a powerful bit of work too. Mm. But um, anyway, how are we doing? We're at 8.22. Um, any more questions or observations? Anybody who has been uh, shy and retiring who have something to say that they would like to share. Um, Chloe, I think you've been quiet and Tonya and Glenn, I think you will be silent witnesses. Any thoughts? Um, oh, I just want to say that it's good. Um, my big, we have a stream along our school and I've been doing testing and been in virus schools for years. I've sort of, um, in my frustration, given up with virus schools, not because of virus schools, but um, the culture of my school um, is not um, conducive to running an envir uh, authentic virus schools program anymore. So I've given up being the lone person um, it's very isolating. So um, I just do what I can with my science students. Um, yeah, so that's my reflection. Um, I just, someone else was talking about how to get the other teachers along. Oh, Natalie. And uh, yeah, it's hard work. And if they, and I've tried for a few years. So any tips? <laughs> so Tanya, one, the one thing I did do is whenever we went on a trip or, uh, you know, if there was something available through Envira School because they have events throughout the year, I would always yeah. try and take a different teacher each time with me or a different, you know, uh, group of buddy kids to, yeah, just, yeah. just to expose yeah. them to it if nothing else, you know. I know what you mean yeah. by it's hard work trying to do it yeah, all. Yeah, I think I guess it depends on the school. My school's yeah. very 
um, urbanized, tightly timetabled. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, there's not the flexibility, unfortunately, yeah. but um, we do have an outdoor classroom and some teachers are um, inspired. I think for some of the mindset is that, you know, it's too, it's a lot more uh, work and um, takes too much time. So, you know, I think I, mm. yeah, it's, it's difficult. I did have that extra freedom. It was easier because we were starting the Spano class and because it was what mm -hmm. the parents wanted and the community wanted. Mm -hmm. And um, we some of the, some of those things that we were doing, we did during Marais days. So we would go out and stay on the Marais for a couple of days. And um, we went into the forest then and we went you know, up the Maunga and, and things yeah. like that during those times as yeah. well. Yeah, I've come to the conclusion that it's... Um, that it's uh, pretty much comes from um, what um, the, the school uh, values as a culture. Yeah. And that comes from, first of all, from the leadership, but from the community. And if the leadership values um, academic and sports, then the curriculum is focused around that. Yes. But if the leadership values uh, for Tanga and environment and Manakitanga, um, right. some of you know, more authentic than others, then the yeah. teachers will go with that. Yeah, because our teachers, I think they will do anything, but it's just, it's hard to be a teacher trying to drive that when yeah. it, when you've got the leadership that's so like, ah, oh, well, we don't really value it. But yeah, you go yeah. off and do your little Enviro stuff. Yeah. That's fine. I like to have the Enviro schools plaque up there, but yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What? Yes. Oh no. <laughs> Hard yeah. work. You're, you're obviously a pioneer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. How are we doing? Anybody else? I just wanted to say thank you for sharing. Um, when I saw you, when I saw this talk advertised late last year, I was really gutted at the time that I couldn't make it along. Um, and I really love the idea, and it's something one of my teachers has talked about, one of the teachers of my team has talked about before as well. So, I, yeah, I think it's um, something we could definitely pursue, but probably with a smaller group, like you were saying, um, or with a class that's dedicated to it. So I'm a secondary teacher and got a lot of year nines and stuff working on this sort of stuff at the moment. But I think for a small group, it would be quite cool. So thank you. Kia ora, Chloe. Thank you. All right, Glenn, did you have anything to say or um, are you happy? Happy, okay, jolly good. Well, if there's uh, nobody has anything else to say, I would like to thank you very much, Jane. You've opened my eyes to this and uh, I, it's a little, I'm, I'm a little bit too old for this, I'm 77. Um, but, you know, I think it's a bit late for me to, to get into Toreo to the extent that you have, so well done. <laughs> However, I, I did I did manage to, when, when I was at, at, at um, oh in my late teens I went on a school trip to Italy, and um, I went off around the town with a mate and we came back and the and the bus back to France had gone, and I thought oh God where the, where the hell is the bus gone you see and I was trying to f looking around for it and asking people, and I didn't have any Italian so I said um, parlez-vous français. No, 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 no. Uh, Latine. You speak Latin. Ah, little I. So I said, Ubi est autobus. And they gestured <laughs> and said, The bus has gone around the corner. And uh, they said the word sounded like essence. So they, the bus had actually gone around to refuel. But, um, you know, it's quite useful to have another language, Toreo or Latin or whatever. <laughs> so, anyway, thank you very much indeed, Jane. And thank you, everybody else, for turning up. Um, on on this um, cool night. Keep warm and see you all again. Okay. Thanks, Jane. Cheers. Good Thank you, everybody, for coming. Bye. Bye. Good Nighty night. <laughs> Thank Sweet you. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>